here at HSN. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you're having a great evening. I'm Lynn Murphy. Jay Feingold is here with us, and Jay has the original drawings and, and sketches from the Franz Xavier collection, and hence that 13 years ago, how we were able to connect here at HSN and do an exclusive brand that truly is inspirations, many of them almost exact to the original right. one-of-a-kind designs right. that this uh, jeweler's jeweler, if you will, uh, created. Now, this piece here, I'm gonna tell you, is gonna be truly the most beautiful, beautiful aquamarine color it's really special. I've ever seen yeah. made. Right. It's what an aqua is supposed to look like. Yeah. Right. I mean that, and, and it's so funny because most of us just get used to seeing washed out blues right. or right. washed out almost like a, a green, like an algae green color and say, oh, that's, right. a, that's, a, that's an aquamarine. This is simulated over four and a half carats. That center stone, not only could it be obviously a flawless aqua, it's so flawless and perfect, it could be a blue diamond. I'm telling you, in a lighter color, it could you be. know. It could be. That's how yeah. brilliant and fiery that center stone is. But let's go through the magic here once again and talk about, look at the baguettes that are channel set, all the attention, the detail. We showed this one time. Over 100 of these, just like that, were pre-selected. And for good reason. Are you kidding? For $59.95, just the metal all done in the sterling silver. We also have it available in two flex pays right now. I do have sizes 5 through size 10. Okay, well, I can't promise that for very long. Right. Right. <laughs> Even from the angle you're holding it, Jay, it looks like it's appetite or teal. I mean, it's just right. exactly. it's color yep. changing. Yep, yep. And, I mean, there's so, there's so many surprises to this ring, too. The aqua is magnificent. To see it as an octagon mm -hmm. is really unusual. Although a lot That's of, a, a, you saw a lot of uh, octagon aquas way back when, you don't see them so much anymore. This really was the go-to shape for aquas in the earlier part of the century. Look at the rest of the ring. Look at the way the graduated baguettes come down the shoulder. And don't just look at that. Look at that space between the line of baguettes and the rest of the gallery work. It real that, that line space is so striking and sets everything off. And then the gallery work on the side with these lovely little teardrops set, basically French pierced into the metal. French piercing means when you cut out an, a, a shape that is a very distinctive shape. You're not just doing wire work. You're cutting out a shape that has mm. that has flow and, and a little bit of meaning and styling to it. We've, we've taken all of those elements and put it together in a great face-up octagon aqua so that you, you the aqua is the center of attention, yeah. but everything else supports it beautifully. And that would be like a four-carat aqua? <laughs> it's, it's like a it's dream big. come true. Yeah, it's big. And then all the tapered baguettes and everything else, that's where the 4.82 carats, which right. would be the other diamond equivalents, would absolutely equate to. This ring is going to be an instant customer pick. This ring I cannot keep my eyes off of because right. of that incredible color and the changing and the fire, the changing of the blues from teal to Caribbean to Swiss to even like a deep London from the angle I was looking at the right, you're I don't holding think, it, You Jay. can't get London to do this. This, this, would, this, is, this is more like appetite. I think. Yeah. You right. know what? I have to agree with you. Yeah. And any color, I mean, there's something about aqua and blues in general. I mean, universally, it's the number number one most popular chosen colored stone, right. gemstone, and color, for that matter, in the entire world when you talk about this this blue. So in my opinion, why not have every shade of blue if you're able to do it in a, in a simulated stone? And this one is absolutely that because you have the absolute that are pulling through with the baguettes and the round cut stones that are really bringing that much more light into it to show off the extreme fire. But this is just a splendid statement of luxury and taste. And would you say more like an Edwardian type of, uh, of timepiece and tradition? Well, it is because because it's a platinum look, because you've got the white look mm. with all the stones set in the inside, and the French piercing is more of an Edwardian look because they were really, that was when they were experimenting with platinum. But this is just so amazing with these baguettes in that center stone. It, it's really transitional. It goes from it goes from Edwardian into deco. It's got these great deco geometric touches, and that's the real spectacular nature of it. It's using the older techniques with techniques which were so difficult to master and it's putting it in a in a way it's surrounding it in a motif that is so modern it's 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 edwardian it's deco but quite frankly it's now 
I'm telling you, this is better than any colored topaz I've ever seen. Right. I'm not kidding. Right. If you are, and I'm saying that only because, you know, topaz is also an alternative first stone to November. Uh, we love, of course, aqua. Are right. you kidding? I mean, to get a four carat aqua for our March girls out there, grab this. If you are December, which is turquoise and your blue colors, this could also be, you know, a perfect first stone ring for our December girls. Or just anybody who is mesmerized by, obviously, the setting, obviously, by the changing of the color or just the overall beauty. Treat yourself tonight. $10 off. Flex pay on top of that. So what's it? $30, basically. You're going to get it. You're going to receive it. When you open up that box, I promise you. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Take it outside, right, in, 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 the lit, in the sunlight, and just open up the box. And then you'll see the way it's set in the Xavier box and just turn it. You don't even take it out. Just turn it in the box and see if it's not one of the most beautiful, beautiful, beautiful blues, beautiful settings that you have ever, ever, ever seen. I promise you, it's going to be. And you can hear the passion in my voice. And this, you know, I wouldn't say with every single one, but it's the only one of this nature that we've ever done in Aqua in the Xavier collection. And he was mainly... Obviously, we we're saying he was known for bringing, you know, the platinum look into jewelry here in, in, in the States, in America. But what about, I mean, he loved diamonds. Did he work with a lot of gemstones? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, yes. And he was one of the, you know, he was one of the few in the city who were able, who was able to manufacture platinum. And when platinum, platinum came in, it was the craze. And that was techno technologically where the stone cutting techni techniques came into, uh, came into effect, when all of the metal working techniques came into effect. This was a very experimental period working with, with materials that had never been used before and developing it into styling that was the cutting edge of what was going on in the world. And what makes him really unusual is he did that not only for Nouveau, but also for Edwardian and also for Deco and then carried it through to the war years and, and after that, because that, this company was alive until the late 1960s. I met his son in the mid-1970s. How about and that? And he was in his 80s. His right. son. Right. At that time. Right. And now his son, did he follow in the same footsteps? Two, two sons. And they both did? Carl and Franz Jr., yes. And they were both jewelers? Both jewelers. They How ran the it? factory, and I worked in the factory. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. And you learned a lot, you were saying, because it was like bench jewelry, it right? Was, I mean, it, you were... was a, it was the most difficult and rewarding experience I ever had in my life. No, God, no kidding. Right, no kidding. So you learned, you know, the, like we were always often say, you know, lost art, but that's the, that's only way, the technique That's the only you way used. you're going to learn this. You, you know, there are schools that teach jewelry. You're not going to learn how to do these kinds of things in school. It's just not possible. Yeah. You have to have somebody who's willing to teach you and mentor you and frankly, probably beat you up some. <laughs> and you have, to, you have to be willing to accept that and basically work for practically nothing. Well, and I had a college degree at that time. Yeah. Great. Right. And one of your best moves, though, and now, you know, being it able to acquire the archives yes. and all of that. It has paid so, off. And, and